Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about this article that I saw in the Wall Street Journal. I got I don't normally read the Wall Street Journal, but I saw the headline on LinkedIn and I said, uh, eh, not too surprising. So we're going to talk about why 70,000 startup uh, tech employees were laid off. I mean, obviously it's because of everything going on in the world, but we're going to talk a little bit about that and also why right now, you know, what the sort of things that you get from going to an established company versus a startup. Let's go ahead and get into it. So since March, 70,000 tech employees have been laid off. To give you an idea, just in Silicon Valley, that's 25,500 of that seven. So a third of the jobs came from companies that you would think were established uber groupon airbnb so on and so forth right which is like kind of crazy when you think about like uber laid off 6500 people which is only a quarter of its workforce and i start thinking to myself like why does why, why does uber have 26000 employees <laughs> like i don't know like i know they do a lot but 26000 employees all right um uh, Okay, cool. Like, whatever. My, my organization I work for has, like, a quarter million. Uh, but, like... Uber, what are you doing over there? You don't make money yet! This is the problem with these startups, man. Um, so, like, right now is probably the worst time ever to go to a startup. Um, people are consolidating their money. And the idea that... The idea that you are going to go to a higher risk situation right now is a very silly one. Um, I'm all for risk. I'm about educated risk. Like I invest in things like Bitcoin at times, right? With a portion of my money, not all educated risks. I'm okay. You know, buying cruise line stocks when they're down during all this while still buying S and P 500 ETFs. Like, but with your job, you're so incredibly all in on a single job most of the time. You know, some of us have side projects and so that. Even I, I do side projects all the time. I've been working on side projects for five years. This YouTube channel is almost five years old. Kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't really understand it years back when I heard Chris Hawk say it, but it makes sense now as a senior developer versus a junior developer that oftentimes and i've had this with other senior developers my tech lead at old job um oftentimes what you're looking for is the bit of crazy that works with your crazy and that will have a steady paycheck and right now startups are it, it's hard to it's hard to advise anyone who's not going for their first junior level role to go to a startup because they're just bleeding jobs and money and understandably um Things are in flux, and the idea that you're going to go into a business that is typically ran based off investor money. Investors, yeah, they have more money than the rest of us, but at the end of the day, they, they're going to be pulling back their money as well, as, as you know we've seen with all this stuff going on. And so the super growth models are kind of nutty. And also, those are big startups, right? There's a bunch of smaller startups that don't even have the luxury of like, hey, we're just gonna lay off a fourth of the staff. Like that happens, right? I, I, I've been laid off and I, I didn't take it personally. It sucks, but you can't take it personally, and it's a business, and so you have to understand that, right? So, but these smaller, the smaller startups that are like the real startups, like if you think of Airbnb, <laughs> if you think of Airbnb and Uber as a startup. It's not. Okay, like <laughs> both these companies are worth billions. Like with a B. They're not startups. All right. Maybe at one time everybody was a startup. Calling Airbnb uh and Uber a startup is like calling me at thirty two a baby. Like, yes, that's true. I started as a baby. You know what I mean? Like that was there. I, you know, I uh, eventually became a toddler, a child an adolescent, a teen, an adult, and, you know, here we are, right? And uh, eventually I'll become a late, uh, you know, I'll become a boomer <laughs> or whatever the kids are saying, right? Uh, but 
they're not startups. There's other real startups where they're really figuring out how to get their paychecks. Like people aren't interested in them. And if they don't turn a profit, you're going to be out of a job. I've had so many people laid off f- friends and colleagues of mine. They're laid off, had their hours cut back or had their salaries, mandatory salary decrease. And, um, you know, luckily I haven't had to deal with that. I, it's, it's, it's scary to see what's out there, but it's also a nice reminder of why you need to, I should say nice. It's an unfortunate reminder of why you need to save money, why you don't want to be part of the 80% of this paycheck to paycheck, why you um, want to keep your cost of living low, why you want to have, um, you know, continue to work on your skills, just chipping away, why you want to have side projects, bringing things in, making yourself more valuable. And it's, you don't want to be caught with your pants down, but more than anything else right now is the time where you want to, it's, it's so weird because <laughs> excuse me, the world is shifting very, quite a bit right now. And so there are companies that are hiring that are taking advantage of the fact that some of these other organizations are bleeding, <sighs> bleeding good talent. And it makes you wonder, like, you know, what position would you rather be in? Would you rather be in a position where you are worried about your next paycheck? Or would you rather go to a more established company where, yeah, you always have to have some level of worry with your paycheck? That's why I work on side projects and things like that. And But, um... At least they have enough money to pay the bills, right? Like, like, um, and they don't, you know, they're not worried about people buying pieces of the company and giving money and donations. And so, like, these tech startups are so risky now. And I think we're gonna see a shift. People ask all the time, like, "Hey, what do you, what do you think is gonna happen in web dev in the next five, ten years?" And the honest God, truth is, who, nobody knows. Um, but I don't think it'll be too different than what we're doing now. Um, there'll be different frameworks and different tweaks here here or there graphql become more prominent over just standard rest apis whatever but the thing that i think is going to shift quite a bit is i i don't see startups like true startups being like they were i think so much money has been invested and some of it has been lost and so much of it's like like oh my god has anyone been like i haven't heard about we work in a while but like we work went from trying to do which is an office space where you have to go in this is like <laughs> this i i i i'm waiting to see like some we work stories um where i remember like last year when all the ipo stuff with we work was happening and they're saying well what if there's a recession and you know people cut back like well what if people don't go into offices anymore like truly like think about this right now is that how many of us are working remotely and are planning to continue to work remotely. I have no plans to go back into the office. I know a lot of organizations. I see things all the time. Google's remote till X, Y, and Z. And Twitter, X, Y, and forever. And, you know, all these sorts of companies. And I wonder, like, you know, you have these startups, right? Even though WeWork's worth billions. They may not be worth the $44 billion they wanted or whatever. And now they're four. Um, but still billions. But you have a lot of these things that are running off of other people's money not because they're making money but other people's money it's a sketchy <laughs> sketchy sketchy thing and um the truth of the matter is for most people going into that the reward is not worth the risk a lot of times so i just thought this was an interesting article i'll share it in there it's um you know, it doesn't say too too much but it, it sort of breaks down by category where a lot of the um job losses are Others kind of a big category, but transportation, retail, food, finance, travel, all the stuff that you would expect where things are hurting. Marketing. Marketing is usually one of the first things businesses cut back uh, when things aren't going well. But anyhow, uh, with all that being said, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Think about that next time you're going to a startup. I'm not saying, you know, rid out, get rid of all startups, but, um, you know, it'll th- think about... Just think about it. Consider it. Um, But yeah, 
I'll see you guys next time. Check out my courses in the description below. Bye, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.